Hi folks, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Brand Life Coaches. You know, there was such a nerve touched with my, my first video on dealing with the neighborhood narcissist. Uh, and I've been doing some further processing, so now we have part two, dealing with the neighborhood narcissist. And I, I thought of a killer, killer, killer metaphor. This fellow um, has, when the weather's a bit warmer, gorgeous flowers in his yard. I've never seen a yard with so many beautiful flowers, beautiful landscaping. It actually was part of why uh, Renda and I bought the house because it's like living next door to, you know, a professional garden and we got to enjoy the beauty as well. But I thought the flowers were about inner beauty because I thought, and my experience has been every gay fellow I've ever known has been a pretty beautiful person and kind and gentle and sweet. And most of them are like me and they're sort of metrosexual. They like beautiful things. They're good with design. But what I found out was the outer beauty actually was more about perfectionism and ego and pride and competition. This applies not only to the neighborhood narcissist and his yard, this applies to all narcissists that look good. They may not physically look good, but they probably do, but <clears throat> uh, whether their bank account looks good, their, their home is impressive, their car is impressive, their job is impressive, um, uh, their, their uh, website is impressive, um, you might think it's an expression of their character but it might be an expression of their character <laughs> in a whole nother way. But um, actually this guy's yard is a source of narcissistic supply. And the rage came out. I came within two feet of his yard, his source of narcissistic supply, towing a dead palm tree with my motorcycle and this guy went ballistic because if I managed to scrape up his yard, that was interfering with and uh, causing a problem with his narcissistic supply. I always have a, a white spot on my suit. Let me uh, take a break to clean that up as much as I can. I'm a perfectionist. Eh. Um, but isn't that interesting that beware of beautiful things and people because they may not be, be beautiful. What I found out was far from being kind and gentle and nice. He was the meanest, one of the meanest, most demeaning, aggressive, backstabbing, smear campaigning individuals I've ever met. But um, he gets along famously with the people across the street and the people down the street. Why? Because there's not conflict, one, with waking him up and God help you if you wake up the king uh, with the sound of dog barking and two, the people across the street and down the street see the beautiful flowers and uh, there's no way that they're going to uh, aggress upon his yard. So he's the lovely, happy, uh, gay fellow who has the prettiest uh, yard on the block 
but if you live right next door to him and you wake him up with dog barking and if you scratch his yard or even come close to he will hate you and he will go on a mission to get you out of the neighborhood he actually said it he said why don't you get out of this neighborhood because you don't belong I shared with you that uh, uh, the, the couple that lived here previously stayed in the neighborhood they just got off of our street because his wife didn't feel comfortable or safe there now I know why and the nice fellow on the other side of me who's not a narcissist said oh that guy was a jerk who lived there well that's the thing is I have really nice dogs and Rinda and I are really nice people but nobody likes us he says and I said why didn't anybody like us he goes because you're dogs and our dogs are real nice so here's the thing and 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 it's another uh, killer point um, and you guys know this there's something really dark and powerless and surreal when you're left on the outside of the gossip circle on the outside of the flying monkey circle and you feel all this negative energy and hatred coming at you from multiple sources and you don't have the slightest clue where it came from uh, the first time our dogs barked we, we had actually accidentally left them out when we went to the movies and you know we're humans we make mistakes he left us a nasty scathing uh, letter and I got I went out and bought a card and wrote a really nice kind apology and he, he ignored it another a couple of other things here here's my theory you can tell who a person is by their dog and this guy's dogs are aggressive and mean and I've never ever connected with them now the nice fellow on the other side has a boxer who I'm in love with and he brought him home when he was a puppy and uh, the little boxer loves me and I love him and every time we see each other it's a love fest and um, but this fellow on the other side the narcissist his dogs just bark and they, they act like they hate you well I wonder where they got that hateful energy I think you're also what you drive for the most part and what would a narcissist drive uh, sure, surely, you know, if they're super rich, maybe they'll drive a, tes drive a Tesla or a Lam Lamborghini. But he, he drives the spank spanking new uh, white and gold Escalade and a brand new silver Camaro. Those are two narcissist mobiles if I ever heard it. So... Um, but, I, but I, I, again, I caution you to uh, don't go to war with the neighborhood narcissist. Defend yourself. Document everything. But I'm not going to go on a campaign of singling out my neighbors and talking about the neighborhood narcissist. That will blow up in my face. He'd been here for five years. I'm the new guy. He's got them snowed. Um, I won't, I won't, <laughs> I was thinking if, if I drove by, saw him in his Camaro, I might flip him the bird. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wave at him. He might flip me the bird, but, but I'm going to be a gentleman. The folks down here don't know who I am. They don't know I make YouTube videos. If, if I had any belief that, he, that he might watch this video, I wouldn't have made him. Because I, um, the best um, strategy with not all, but, but many narcissists is to ignore, ignore, ignore. I, I had mentioned um, Dirty John, uh, the, um, uh, and it's actually made on Bravo. You can't get it on Netflix in the, in the States, but you can get it on iTunes. 
but it's the most chilling depiction of a greater narcissist sociopath path I've ever seen. Uh, right now I've been watching it at night and I can't go to sleep afterwards. But there was this banker that he intimidated and went a banker, a lawyer. He, he intimidated a lawyer. Every time he used a lawyer, he would screw somebody and then he would sue the lawyer for malfeasance and so he wouldn't have to pay the lawyer. But he, the lawyer knew who he was and gave him these, uh, the narcissist gave him these chilling looks and um, he demanded all of his money back and the lawyer wisely gave him all his money back because he knew who the guy was. He knew, I can't beat this guy legally and he's liable to kill me. So I just want to get out of the way. I'm a bit out of my depth. So beware of beautiful flowers and landscaping. Don't assign inner beauty to outer beauty. You know what? If somebody is going out of their way and putting on a full court press to have all kinds of outer beauty, it's probably because it, on their interior life, they're filled with self-loathing. They're filled with hatred. They're filled with unresolved childhood abuse. Uh, at one point, this fella said, look at you. You look so stupid. I was like, I was like, you don't even know me, dude. I, I'm a pretty smart guy, uh, but I, I could just I could just uh, feel that he had experienced that degradation from his dad as he was growing up, and he was then just projecting it onto me. So beware of beautiful flowers. Be, you know what? Just like in every other part of life, if something seems too good to be true. It probably is too good to be true. A friend of mine called me yesterday. I was laying on the beach. And um, he uh, uh, was asking me uh, some, some questions about a possible new relationship he, he was getting in because he didn't want to screw it up. And I said, dude, you're already screwing it up because you seem too anxious, you know. Um, uh, and she seemed too anxious, and I explained love bombing. Um, I told him, I said, you should be terrified of any woman because of your history of uh, not being able to connect and failed relationships and um, picking, you know, pretty unhealthy people. And so that would be my um, uh, advice for daters. Uh, in this Dirty John, uh, the uh, uh, woman met him on our time. Stay off the dating sites. Do not meet somebody on Match.com, eHarmony, Zeus, any of those. Because there are dangerous people. There, there, there's either uh, lambs or there's wolves, and there's about 80% wolves, so be very careful. Anyway, you can't interview your neighbors and set up three uh, uh, dates with your neighbors to see if you want to live next to them, so don't get suckered by pretty flowers, but you know, it is what it is. You, you choose where you want to live, and that's your sacred place, and don't be bullied by the narcissist, but don't uh, kick a, a hornet's nest either and make it worse. Thank you for watching today. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Tonight is our uh, live stream show, and yours truly is going to host about 8.15 to 9.45. We're going to have some fellowship, and we're going to talk about uh, recovery. Thanks for watching today, and God